When refugees arrive in Knoxville, the paths they take to integration rarely look exactly the same as each other. However, there are some similarities in what they experience. So let's travel this road map to see what a typical refugee can expect to encounter upon arrival in Knoxville, Tennessee. But let's look at it from our perspective so we can better anticipate how we can help them integrate into their new life here. First, a refugee family arrives at the airport. They don't know what to expect when they come into the airport, but they're often surprised to find folks waiting for them, with signs with their names on them, maybe balloons and small gifts. They're taken to an apartment that's been prepared for them with donated furniture and other household items according to their needs as a single or family. A meal in the new home awaits them, and they rest from their journey. In the next few days, the family must get oriented to their new surroundings. Where is the nearest grocery store? How will they get there? Is it on the bus line? Where will the children attend school? What do they need for school, and what time do they need to be ready? There are literally a hundred questions that first week in their new home. Depending on what country the refugees have arrived from, they may have different levels of understanding about how our culture works. In addition, some speak English, but many don't. Other needs arise, like medical needs. Children must be vaccinated for school. There are also immunizations required for immigration, TB tests, physicals, etc. Families from more torn countries often arrive with pre-existing medical needs, as they were not able to get adequate medical care before arriving. They not only need help locating doctors, understanding the basics about insurance, and help getting transportation to appointments, but they also need interpreters, explanations about medicine, and personal follow-up in the days after appointments where medicine was prescribed. The children may have mixed feelings about attending school. Younger children usually adjust rather easily. For teenagers, it can be more difficult. They all must be enrolled, though, and care taken to make sure they're able to manage all their subjects. Sometimes tutoring is necessary, especially as they adjust to doing school in English. But the children are not the only ones needing to integrate English into their daily lives. In exchange for the refugee funds they receive, adults are required by Bridge Refugee Resettlement Agency to take English as a second language classes, also known as ESL. There are many of these around Knoxville, some even providing transportation and childcare. Bridge also provides a job club, which helps prepare the refugees for a job as well as finding a job. So, once the family has settled a bit and answered some of the most immediate questions, attention soon turns to the need for the breadwinners of the family to land jobs. Bridge helps the families find a job. But, just like for all of us when we look for a job, sometimes this happens quickly and sometimes it takes a little longer. Once a job is found, transportation to the new job must be considered. And as the family begins to assume more financial responsibility, they need help enrolling in such government programs as food stamps, government housing, and in some cases, Social Security. Usually on down the road, after the family has established some level of independence, they desire to manage transportation on their own. Having gotten by with shared rides and using the bus line, they begin to study for their driver's license. Once they get their license, they must get a car and manage the additional expenses of insurance and gas. It takes a family a few years, really, to integrate into our city. The whirlwind of activity in the first few months subsides into a routine where they begin to figure out enough of the language to make friends and explore their surroundings, like the beauty of the mountains, where they can find their own ethnic foods, and consider options of how they want to spend the extra time in their days. Refugee families have a lot of new things to learn when they come to Knoxville. But the thing that stands out to most of them is not how long they have to wait at the emergency room because they have trouble finding a doctor, or for the Africans and South Americans, braving the cold weather of our East Tennessee winters, or wondering about some of the strange foods they find in our grocery stores, like Pop-Tarts. It's the people that stand out to them, the people who come alongside them and sit beside them in the emergency room and bring coats for the winter and take them to the grocery store, especially the ones who explain what a Pop-Tart is. This is what stands out to the refugees who come to Knoxville. They're new friends.